After reading chapters one and two of A Woman's Wage by Alice Kessler Harris, I was able to get some insight on the wage differences and political issues that began in the 19th century. One major difference that I noticed compared to our current era now is the morality and values of society. In the past, a person's job contributed to their social status. For example, one main topic of discussion in Chapter 2 was the reputation of low-income women that feel as it is, it is a necessity to earn a living through prostitution. In the past, it would make sense that people would feel this way, considering that if you ask any person over 50 how they would view someone with that occupation, most would not be in favor and will pass judgment on their generation as a whole. However, our society has greatly drifted and changed in the ways that we view someone because of their career. Chapter 2 states that of the 15 experts who answered the FIC's questions as to whether women's low wages yielded prostitution, 12 attributed prostitution to low family incomes not the low wages of the women worker. In today's age, we can witness occupations that people would equate to prostitution as a person's personal choice. There have been so many shifts in the way that we look at jobs that it would be pointless to judge someone based on something so trivial. Due to the cost of living, our own material wants slash needs and the moral obligation to make a living we have become a society that needs to work in order to survive. Thus, you will find many people today, no matter the gender, working multiple jobs to meet their expenses and financial demands. Compared to the past, when employers assumed that all working women lived in families where working males provided them with partial support. In today's age, many young adults who want to create their own life do not have someone to depend on. We have moved away from the typical family home and we have embraced the need to work for all that can. Lastly, one last point that I would like to argue is that the issues that were raised due to gen gender inequality are also arguments that are valid towards minorities. Chapter 1 states that wages were believed to function as a terrain of contest over visions of fairness and justice. For groups of minorities that have faced inequality for centuries, the same argument can be made for them as well. My own personal belief is that wages is not something to compete over. I believe that a person's earnings do not equal to the value of that individual. In that same belief, a person's pay should not differ from the person that they share a desk with. And in a perfect society, one's greed for more should not outweigh another person's need to survive.